Okay, so we're going to talk about a few things dealing with our measurement unit. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Each line on a bench rule is known as what? Can you do me a favor, Sills? Can you move back there and then I can take the mask off and I'm six feet away? That would be cool. All right, I'm going to take this off. I'm sick of wearing it. All right. <laughs> So each, each line on a bench rule is known as what? Graduation. graduation. There are only a couple, there are only four main graduation skills that we're going to work with in this shop. Okay, the way I teach fractions in this shop, we're dealing with fractions of an inch, is probably way different than what maybe you've been taught fractions in, in it's say a math class. Okay, you used to be able to say, well, the home ec class, which was anything from cooking uh, to sewing to child care, things like that, uh, they use fractions a little bit differently than what I would as well. So there are four main graduation skills. So the four grad skills that we use are what? What's one of them? Grad skills. Can they tell me? Eighths. That's one of them. What's another one? Fourths. Okay. Fourths, we will kind of table that. I'm not disagreeing, but not no. the way the book talked about. Eighths. Eight times two Three is seconds. eight times two is sixteenth. Then what comes what sells? Thirty seconds. And sixty fourths. Okay. So those are your main four graduation skills. Will you have fourths going? Yes. Could you also have halves? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I oh, basically yeah halves. So. Those are the four main graduation skills, okay, that we're going to be dealing with in here. I'm going to pass around this bench rule. Just out of curiosity, you can see how they multiply. Two times two becomes four. Four times two is eight, so on and so forth. If, what would be the next graduation skill if we were to jump up another one? 128. 128s. Okay, so I'm going to pass around this bench rule. If you look, one side, they're all labeled. I have that, I buy the bench rules that are labeled for you so you don't really have to guess what you're doing with. One side is eight, so each inch is divided into how many equal parts? Eight. Eight. If you flip it around, the next thing, next side is sixteenths. Okay, each inch would be how many parts? Sixteen. Very good, not a trick question. I'm gonna ask you next, can too, see if you're paying attention. After that, we're doing with 30 seconds, which means each inch is how many equal parts? 32, 64th is 64th. 128, how come they don't make, or I'll back up a second. Which graduation scale is the most accurate? Eight or 30 seconds? 30 seconds. 30 seconds, no, okay. Which one's more accurate, 30 seconds or 64th? 64th. Okay, it is much more accurate because you can measure closer to a line and gives you more accurate measurement, okay? I'll be honest with you, primarily all we're going to use is 16th, although we will touch base and talk about 30 seconds. But if you can read one bench rule, an eighth, you can read a 16th. If you can read a 16th, you can probably you can read a 64th, as long as you know the basic concepts of reading it. So I'll pass this around so you can look at it. When you're done, pass it down to the next guy and then pass it on to sales. So there is graduation skills that we're going to be dealing with. Okay? So if I look up here, bench rule, I'm going to, this is, and you guys can, I apologize right from the get-go, my drawings are not very good, but I'm not an art guy, right? So this is an inch on this. All right, big guy, you got it? Pass it on, Nicola. Okay, this is an inch. Again, we said how many inches are in a feet? Foot? 12. 12 inches in a foot. Okay, this is something that I ask all my classes and I've had a variety of answers. When I measure something, do I use the end of my bench rule to put on what I'm measuring or do I move it in one line? One line. Okay, he says one line. If two you lines. disagree with him, two lines. Never heard that <coughs> one. Colin, you agree? Do I use the end or one line in? Um, the end. I, I am going with Cullen. How come you said one line in, Sales? Uh, I've seen, because I've seen a bunch of rulers that don't have the end right where zero would be. Okay. 
That, that makes perfect sense. And I think some teachers have taught you to move it in a lot because maybe the end is chewed up. It's not right. If our ends are messed up on our bench rules, what do you think I do with them? Throw them away. Throw them in the garbage. If it's not an accurate bench rule, then it's not <laughs> worth having around. Okay? This is an important unit, like I said. Okay? In order to do well in this class, you got to be able to measure things. And I'll be honest with you, when I was in your shoes as a freshman in high school back in 19-whatever, 96, I believe, I did not do a very good job of paying attention to this. Raise your hand if you feel like you're very competent with a bench rule. Just set it there. It's all right. So, so you can take a bench rule test today and pass it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. No. Okay. I would venture to guess most of you couldn't, but if you really want to, and if later on you feel like I'm wasting your time, then I can give you the test, but that's the grade that's going in the grade book without a chance to redo it. So I'll be honest with you, I was not very good at reading a bench rule when I was a freshman. I didn't get much better by the time I was a senior either. I was in your shoes and I thought, well, I'm just gonna kind of halfway pay attention to this and I'm not going to, I'll never need to know it. And guess where I realized or where it started to show up? At during my freshman year in there yeah once I got into the shop okay I was making mistakes and my teacher said well Whistler you didn't pay much attention to your bench rule so from there I kind of floated by and got done what I needed to get done but probably did not do a very good job with it most of my high school career when I started to get better at it is when I started out in college I worked construction so when I worked construction in the summer times, I was on a crew and one day they said, hey Whistler, you're gonna be the cut man for the day. So we were building a house, we we're getting ready, we we're setting trusses. It was my job to cut boards to certain lengths, throw up to them where they'd nail them into place. So they had to holler down a measurement, I'd measure, cut a board, throw it up, and all of a sudden they'd be throwing it back down. Why do you think they're throwing it back down? Because it wasn't the right length. It wasn't the right length. Sometimes they would say, hey, you need to cut an eighth inch off of that, okay? So I could always change that, but the problem was if I had to cut more off, what are they all doing while I'm doing that? While I'm taking time to recut it, what are they doing themselves? Wasting time. They're sitting up there they're like, what the heck are we supposed to be doing? Which, if you're in construction and you're building a house, the quicker you do it, the more money you make. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So they were not happy to have to wait. Sometimes they'd throw down a board and it would be too short. So guess where it went? Garbage. Um, in the scrap pile, which is essentially garbage. Now eventually sometimes we could reuse those boards. But at the end of the day, right before lunch, I remember the guys getting down and they were all kind of teasing me and making fun of me and said, look at that pile of scrap you got going on there. And at the end of the day, the boss comes to me and he says, man, you need to figure out these measurements and you need to figure it out quick because I can't afford to, to waste all this lumber because you can't measure it. So when it became real world and I realized, hey, this is gonna cost me my job if I don't get to it, that's when I realized I needed to. But I was taught a little bit differently and maybe if I'd have been taught the way I'm gonna teach you, maybe I'd have been better, maybe I wouldn't have, okay? I didn't always pay attention and I understand you guys have the choice to do that or you don't. So that's my story on why you should pay attention. One, you're not gonna be able to do things very accurately. It happens all the time. Students bring me their projects, their well projects, so, and their plans so that I can show them what to actually do, kind of explain it. They bring me two plates that are supposed to be, let's say, four inches in length, and one of them shorter than the other. So the first thing I do is say, go get a bench rule and measure and tell me if one of them's wrong or if they're both wrong. If one of them's right and one of them's wrong. If it's too long or too short, what they get, if it's too short, what are they gonna have to do? Get a new piece. They're gonna have to cut a new piece. If it's too long, can it be fixed? Yeah. Any idea how? Uh, you cut some off. They could recut, but a lot of times it's so close that it would, it's not safe to put back in the chop saw, which is what they're using to cut those parts. So then they gotta get out the angle grinder. I don't know if any of you have ever used an angle grinder for an extended amount of time, but it is not a fun tool to use. Now, it has its purpose, and I'm not saying I hate using it, but man, I do not want to have to use it just because I can't read a bench rule and cut my part accurately, okay? And a lot of times, students don't realize how important it is until they've had to cut, grind on several parts. 
The other thing is, if you cut short parts too many times, what am I going to do to your, your metals bill or your intro to welding bill? I'm going to have to add to it, right? If you're constantly wasting material because you cut too short, it's going to get into your pocketbook mm. a little bit. It's also going to make you take more time in getting projects completed. So we only have a limited amount of time, and I'm hoping some of you are interested in doing an uh, additional project of your own choice once you get everything done that is required. So back to our bench rule, okay? If I divide this inch, so this is my zero mark, this is my one inch mark. If I divide this right in the middle, this line right here is known as what? A half way point? A half, right? Half of an inch. How many halves are there in an inch? Two. Two, okay? Anytime you have two over two or any number over two, as a matter of fact, that becomes what measurement? Anytime you have two over two or any number over itself, it becomes? One. One, right? So there are two halves. If I split this again, call on one of these become? Fourths. Fourths. How many fourths are there in Eight. every given inch? Four. Four, okay? One fourth, two fourth, three fourths, okay? Don't think of it as that. One, two, three. Well, actually, there's four fourths. But you can see there's one, two, three, four equally divided spaces, correct? If I split it again, going from fourths, then it becomes the next lines eight. become what? Eight. Eights. Very good. So how many eights are in an eighth inch bench rule graduation scale? Eight. Eight. Okay. If I split them or divide them equally again, those become known as what? Can Six. two? Six. Not sixes. Uh, like sixteenths. Sixteenths. Yeah, I'll make this one a little bit longer. So a lot of times, the smaller they get, the shorter they get. And that's not the case on every bench rule. So don't be like, hey, Whistler, you told me. So we are writing this in fractions of an inch. And I can tell you right now, every answer that you write for this class, and probably this class only, would apply, it would apply to Mr. Benz's class as well. But I'm not saying it a math class. This will be your denominators. So. This number right here, this fraction is what? Three fourths. Three fourths. This top number is known as a? Numerator. Numerator. The bottom number is known as? Denominator. Denominator. M denominator. What is this thing right here called? Either. I'm sure it's got a name, but in like 15 years of teaching, I, I've never known this. It's a circle. And I've never had a student. Last hour, Justin Walker's like, well, I know it, but I forgot it. It's like, man, how do you know something but forgot it? I said, do you mean you, someone told you? Well, yeah, someone told me a long time ago. I'm like, yeah, you didn't really pay attention. That's why you don't know it, right? You can't actually say I know it, but I forgot it. Can you? I guess. You mean you can? Like but maybe if you can't think of the name of it. Okay. That, that, that's different, I suppose. I agree with you on that. So, look it up or ask your math teacher who you got for math. Miss Price. Uh, and she's gone. Right? No, she's trying to make fun. Oh, she is? So, ask her what that little line is. I would love to know. And I say that every year. Guess what? Every year, nobody remembers to do it. I will. Okay. I would appreciate that, Colin. And if you I don't, it's not the end of the world. We'll see. You say a lot of stuff, but nothing ever happens. <laughs> so, in this class, you will always and only have a numerator or a denominator, excuse me, of 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. Okay? That being said, is one third ever a fraction that you will see on our bench rule? No. Absolutely not. I guarantee you, and I encourage you to find, if you think you can, a bench rule that you can show me a third of an inch. I'm pretty dang certain it does not exist unless it's a gimmick bench rule. Okay? I have never seen one third of an inch. So when you're writing your answers, you got to realize that they need to have a denominator of one of these six numbers. If they don't, is it a correct answer? No. no. Absolutely not. The other thing we have to do is we have to reduce our fractions, or some people refer to it as simplify, and we also have to label. Now, I can look at this bench rule 
And I can tell you right there, that's one eighth of an inch. Okay, pay attention up here, Colin. I can tell you that that is three fourths of an inch. I can look at that one and know that that's seven sixteenths of an inch. Okay, there's nine sixteenths, there's five eighths. How am I able to look at that and so quickly give the answer? How is that possible? Why am I, am I a genius? Because you've done it so many times. It, really, the only reason is because I've had a lot of experience. And with it. you can also know that you can see like the fourth because they're longer. It is. It's longer, and the more you practice it, the easier it is. Now, am I expecting all of you to be able to do that? Look at it and tell me. No. Would it be a goal of mine for you to get to that point? Yes. Yeah, eventually. But if you don't, no big deal. If you do not know, by looking at that line that is one fourth, or looking at that line and knowing it's seven eighths, the simplest way to do this, and we'll continue on from there. Yeah, that's, that's over. Because the bell rings and it's time to go. I thought we were going to go in here. Not today, my man. Oh my God. It's going to be the death of me, Colin. I can't even beat him like I do in wrestling. 